Looking back over nearly 50 years of uh, training in Aikido and Tai Chi, yoga, meditation, healing, and uh, many, many other hobbies, I've, uh, what I want to share today some, some thoughts and insights, really. I've given it a lot of time to look and study different Aikidoka, some very well respected teachers, but we all are getting older and at the moment the flavour appears to be, perhaps it's always been this way, I don't know, but it appears to be some younger teachers coming through and this is a good thing that uh, we should encourage because they are the future, we are the past. At one time we were the future. I remember Sato Sensei saying to me when I was in Iwama in 1994, Tony, please keep um, the Iwama weapons safe by developing them and teaching them. And when he said develop them, I didn't really understand, but it, you know, change them, look at them, do variations. He was giving me permission. What a great honour that was when he's given us more than enough to, to study without me developing more. I have developed some, but that's another story. What I'd like to talk about today really is whether you're, a, you know, an established Aikido teacher, as a young student, a young teacher, I'd like you to reflect on what you're trying to achieve. If you're trying to copy somebody you admire, perhaps your own teacher, or perhaps a teacher that is not your teacher, but you've found another one on YouTube, you've studied there different videos, the way they do Aikido, and, and you really admire them and like them. You may even find, feel that you can't tell anyone else about this. They may be private to you. I remember really being inspired by Nishio Sensei when he was demonstrating how Aikido is like sword work and the preciseness and accuracy of the sword applied into his Aikido. But somehow that wasn't for me. His style wasn't for me. You know, I'm a big person. I'm not very, you know, flexible. I hope I'm more flexible now than I used to be. Finding not only a teacher that appears to be a similar shape and size to yourself, but I'd like to talk about the practicalities of what I see and what I think is incorrect. My opinion and my opinion only, and you must make the judgment yourself. But nowadays I see teachers with cutting with Ken and their back leg is bent and it's as if when they finish the cut, they're sitting on a bar stool. Saito Sensei corrected me once for this. I copied a teacher and thought he's a really good top ranked teacher, so he must be correct. And I copied his posture. And Saito Sensei said to me on a seminar in Germany once, called me over, Tony, you look like a duck, he said, sticking your backside out like that. Well, of course, straight away, I remembered who the teacher was that I was copying it and it wasn't Saito Sensei and it was very hard for me to undo what I thought I was doing correctly. I see Ken cuts with strange endings. If you're an Iwama Aikidoka or an Aikikai Aikidoka, or all the other names that there are, Tamikis, and if 
Yoshi Oda senses students doing Yoshinkan. It's difficult who to follow. If you can follow someone who's alive, then obviously that would be better than someone who's passed on. But these bent back legs on when they're cutting, or strange, like what I call the perfect posture on ending, is it's more like robotics in perfection rather than a human being doing what's natural. A martial art is different than being a normal standard human being. We do have to learn principles, we have to learn accuracy. We have to learn the technical parts and why we're doing them. It is a self-defense in my mind and always has been. Therefore, the accuracy is very important. What's more important is being able to move freely because it's an art of multiple attack. And with multiple attacking, you can't be a stiff robot unless you think you're that good that you can stay you know, stiff and accurate while a few people are going to try and pile in onto you to do you harm. I hope you know what I'm talking about. Look at not just Saito Sensei, O Sensei, Nisho Sensei, Toei Sensei, Chiba Sensei, you know, the Tamura Sensei, the, the list is endless. Study them, just watch them. You don't have to um, look at their preciseness and their techniques for this particular exercise that I'm asking you to look at. But they're normal people using their body as it was given to them when they were born. They may straighten their leg. This is to eject power in the end or stability in the triangular pose, jigger type pose. There's a reason why they have these set stances. But I think what's happening today is we're getting either very flowery, flamboyant Aikido being demonstrated, where there is no thought of attack. It's just harmony between two people doing a very nice choreographed set of Aikido moves. I was watching a lady doing a Ken Cup that she was copying on a Zoom lesson also the other morning. And I was thinking, this doesn't suit this person's body. They're copying the teacher, the male teacher, but this doesn't suit this tall woman's body. She, the good thing is we all enjoy our art. We all love what we're doing. We think that if we get it correct and copy the teacher that's teaching us, we will advance. We will go far beyond what our mental ability can think of at the time. We're all hoping to be that perfect Aikidoka. My advice is become yourself. If you want to follow a teacher, find out why you like them. But if you're in a position that is odd, look at your own video, look at what you look like. If it doesn't look like the person who's within yourself, how your mind thinks you should act, then it's wrong. Trying to copy somebody that is like trying to fit on a jacket that's two sizes too small or two sizes too large. If it doesn't fit you, you shouldn't be doing it. Because in a real situation, or even in a situation where you want to go to great heights, then you need to find out who you are. Become yourself. Find out how you stand. If you've got a weak back or you bend over, you're a bit hunched in the shoulders, 
These are small things that you can correct. It means that your posture is not good, but to but to deform yourself. Is that the word? Deform anyhow. To make yourself a sh into a shape that isn't suited to your height, size, build, then it's wrong. And you will never find the true peace of the wonderful Aikido that O Sensei gave us. Every single person's Aikido should be different because it's their own. To be a robot of somebody else and to look like somebody else, you think that you may feel as good as what you see them as. It will never happen. Trust me on this. I've been doing it long enough to know. So I hope this will help you consider what I've said. I mean no malice to anybody, but use the body you have. Improve it with yoga, Alexander techniques, anything that will improve your own personal posture, but don't try to become something you're not. Use what you were born with. Thank you for listening. And I hope you find this of interest. Goodbye.